It's often fun to teach chemistry using toys, and some of the toys that we can use are often very simple and familiar types of things. One of the toys that we're going to be working with is a toy called a hand blaster. The hand blasters are objects that you could obviously purchase from Flynn, and you could also find them from a variety of different sources uh, locally in your stores. We're going to use the hand blasters today as we talk a little bit about collision theory and about reactions. Now, we all teach in our science classes, in our chemistry classes, that the collision theory states that there are two parts. Number one, that in order for particles to react, they must collide. And number two, those particles must reach a minimum energy that we call the activation energy. And you could draw a potential energy diagram on your board and you could explain that activation energy depending upon what depth you want to go to with that. But what we have then are two spheres. These spheres are coated with a mixture of potassium chlorate and with sulfur. And it's like if you're of a certain age, the old type cap guns that we would play with, similar kinds of things to what would be in there. When these two objects are close together, even though they are reactive, no reaction takes place. And the reason that there is no reaction is because collision theory. In order for particles to react, they must collide. Even if these particles touch each other, there is no reaction that takes place, at least no observable reaction, because again, while they have met, they have not met the minimum energy that's required in order to make that reaction take place. So what we can do is we can take these apart and we can tap them together and no reaction occurs. Because once again, there's a minimum activation energy that is required to make that happen and we're below that energy. But if we continue to bring them together harder and harder, then we finally get a reaction taking place. We have not only collided, but we have met that minimum activation energy that's required to make that process happen. And so the noise is not loud, it's not scary, but it's something that can be heard in the classroom. And if you're good, and sometimes I am, but most times I'm not, then you can take a tossies in the air. And sometimes catch them. and we get the minimum activation energy once again that's required to make that process happen. So we have a very simple toy, but it's a quick and easy way that students could work with this. And I often like to take demonstrations when possible and turn them into simple labs that students can do. It's one thing to see it, it's another thing to do it on your own. And the hand blasters are inexpensive enough that you could have a number of sets of these in your class. The students could pass them amongst each other. And even if you didn't have enough for each student, there are enough times that they can collide together that you could use this toy multiple times in your classes. And from that, you would then be able to teach this concept of activation energy. The one caution that I would give about working with these is that when it does react, there's a small amount of sulfur dioxide that is produced in that, so it smells a little bit like something burning. Once in a while, you may have a student who is a little bit uh, uh, asthma sensitive, and some of those gases may trigger a little bit of a problem. So you might want to just check in your classroom ahead of time to make sure that there isn't a problem with that, that somebody doesn't have a respiratory disorder that might be triggered with uh, some type of exposure to a sulfur fume or a sulfur dioxide material. But the hand blasters are a really fun way to teach a very simple concept of collision theory.